What's up, guys? And girls. Today, we have some topics on traveling with a toddler. Um, we recently got back from Florida, and it definitely affected her. We'll be talking about stuff to pack, how she was entertained on the flight, what all we did with her while we were there, and how it affected her sleep schedule. With her, she has sensitive skin, so we always got to make sure we bring, like, you, sir, in um, nice, like, baby lotions, that sort of thing. Um, oatmeal soap. Yeah, oatmeal soap is good. I think it's Aveeno is the brand. Yeah. So Aveeno is pretty good. It's got, like, the light blue top. Um, so, like, her bath stuff, her lotion, um, some snacks are always a key. Uh, the travel playpen, pack and play. So she can nap wherever. Um, and for the actual flight, like a blanket, which we forgot the blanket all the way back. So I felt bad because she's probably cold. But I gave her my hoodie. So she's that as a blanket. Um, clothes, bathing suit, diapers, wipes, um, medicines, ibuprofen, Advil. Not a, not, a, not, a, not a ibuprofen. <laughs> Don't listen to him. We did not give her kid ibuprofen or Advil. <laughs> she has infant Tylenol. Infant Tylenol, Tylenol, not Advil. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Um, so that was kind of some of the key things that I packed. Um, is there something missing? We m- forgot to pack her sunscreen, but luckily enough, a uh, elderly lady on the beach who was a local had plenty of it, and she gave us hers. Um, Sun hat. We also forgot a sun hat. Those are definitely key um, with a toddler. You don't want their heads getting burnt, but you also don't want to put sunscreen in their hair and have that mess to clean up later. So that was another key item that we forgot. So learn from our mistakes. Um, Sunglasses. Oh, yes, yes. I brought three pairs of sunglasses to match plenty outfits, of course. Uh, Swim shoes. We packed those as well. So she wouldn't cut herself on the seashells in the ocean or step on anything sharp. Um, a cover up for sure because you don't want her being cold or wearing the wet swimming suit in the car, but you also don't want to change her when she's damp or him. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, but yeah, so on the actual flight, we flew southwest. So the way southwest does their booking is a little bit different than... Like, normally you get a seat, section, row, whatever. Southwest just does groups. So we were in group C or something, and we didn't do family boarding just because the on the way there, we were so late that <laughs> we almost missed the flight. So We were the last ones on the plane, and they announced our names over the intercom that we needed to get to our gate. Yeah, yeah, gate before the plane took off. Yeah, so that was an experience. Um, and then we proceeded to get there and stand in front of the attendants. Yeah. The gate attendants to get our stuff, our stroller tagged and our car seat tagged, which is another thing if you do bring a baby to the airport and you think, well, I don't want to really bring a stroller because that's going to add more time and it's just going to be annoying. We'll just carry them. Bring the stroller. Because we actually got saved by the stroller in Atlanta. Yeah. The stroller in the Atlanta airport, they automatically put you right to the front. We even had like a 5 a.m. flight, and that's the most people I've seen in one setting was in the airport at 5 a.m. in Atlanta. And if it wasn't for the stroller, we probably would have been in the line just to get like our IDs and our things checked for two hours, two and a half hours. It would have been nuts. Yeah, they um, they kind of just pulled us right out of line, too, which very thankful for that um, security agent, I guess it would have been security, mm-hmm. that she saw us with the stroller and just said, hey, come this way. Uh, so we kind of got the same treatment. I think it's similar to if you have a wheelchair. Yeah. So if you have a wheelchair, you can roll through. And so we were just walking past, and it's like every couple steps we took is like, oh, there's 30 minutes gone. There's 30 minutes gone of the wait. And then we get straight up to the thing, straight on our flight, super easy. And uh, so make sure you bring a stroller and car seat. It is free 
to check as well. So don't worry about bags. Um, but anyways, we got there, got in our group and we were separated because we were the last people on the flight. And so Jade was actually with a little one on the way there and the way back because the same situation happened both times. So Jade was the one that was boots on the ground with a toddler in a confined space (laughs) for two and a half hours. Yeah, our flight there was actually uh, packed. There was not an empty seat on the flight. And the only seat left was in the very back row for us. So luckily it was an aisle seat though um, because there was a couple in the back row and they took window and middle. But yeah, we got the aisle seat in the very last row of um, the plane and I've never sat in the back. So sitting in the very last row, I didn't know you could literally hear the flight attendants conversations the whole way and basically see what they're doing. Uh, but I packed crayons and a coloring book for our toddler to keep her entertained on the flight. Um, I packed some books so that she could read to me and we could point to colors. I also packed her a stuffed animal and a baby doll, um, in case she wanted to play pretend in her head with those. And then once she was bored with those, we actually started playing with the pamphlets and the back of the net in the seat in front of us and she was acting like she was reading the pamphlets and when it got to like the sodas that they sell I was pointing at each can like telling her the colors and believe it or not the flight attendant poked her head in the aisle takes it out of my daughter's hands and she's like I'm just gonna take this in case she rips it as if they don't have a lot of those printed off and it's a piece of paper so it's no big deal but I wasn't even gonna let her rip it anyways like if she even got to the slightest of aggravated or out of control where she was gonna rip it I would have put it away myself but yeah I was pretty frustrated about that I just didn't show my emotion towards it um and then luckily a lady across the aisle from us was talking to Sailor for a little bit so that kept her entertained and Basically, yeah, snacks was a big one. Her sippy cup was a big one. We don't give our daughter a pacifier, so I had to keep her entertained. We also don't give her electronics very often, Um, but it's doable. I mean, you obviously got to put in extra work, but kids are work, so. And she snacked on graham crackers on our way ascending into the air, which is another thing I try to get her to drink her sippy cup and um, eat so that when she's we're ascending or descending, she's swallowing. So that way the pressure in her air, ears kind of pop. Um, so hopefully that will help since she's a little and she does not want to wear earmuffs or headphones, whatever you have, noise can- canceling headphones. Um, but yeah, chewing... The graham crackers helped her a lot and drinking her sippy cup helped her a lot because that is a concern as a parent taking a little one on the plane. Not only is it are they going to bug everyone else on the plane, but is it going to hurt their ears a lot? And to our child, there was no signs of her ears hurting at all. She did perfectly fine, was very content. But yeah, on the way back, she just ate those graham crackers. And as soon as we like ascended into the air, She immediately fell asleep on my lap and was asleep the majority of the ride until we started to descend and I moved and woke her up a little bit and the girl next to me was talking and then eventually started talking to her. But we were very fortunate. Um, She's been on a plane six times and she has never once given me trouble. I've just always kept her entertained and I know her really well, so... I knew what to do in order to prevent her from screaming or crying or. Yeah. And for a lot of people, I think you guys would be surprised. Like she is terrible with cars. So she like that confined space in a car. She just absolutely will not do it. But like surprisingly with the plane, like we haven't had issues. So, I mean, if you're anxious about flying with a kid because of something like that, like, you know, your kid the best and you know, you might think that they're not going to be great on the plane with because like with us, like the car is a big thing. That's just really rough to drive with her sometimes. Um, but yeah, I would, I mean, I would give it a try. I wouldn't let it hold you back from traveling, like flying and stuff. Yeah, definitely not. I would never let that hold you back. I would rather spend two hours on a flight to Florida with a 
toddler or an infant any day over driving 15 to 17 hours in a car with them. That would be absolutely nuts, and I don't think we'd make it by the end of the drive because she would scream the whole 15 hours. So even if she does scream the whole plane ride, I'd take two hours of screaming over 15 hours of screaming. Um, And people are understanding, and if you fly a lot, you know you're hardly ever going to get on a plane without a baby or without a dog. So it's not very common to get on a flight without at least one of those or multiple and if they're under two they get on for free that's right only if they're a lap child take advantage (laughs) so we went to clearwater beach specifically and it was great um because that is where our wedding's gonna be and i have some family down there my great aunt and great uncle are down there and my grandma just bought a house down there in Palm Harbor, which is right above Clearwater, about three months ago. And then his mom's side lives down there in Lando Lakes. His aunt lives across the street from John Cena. I know the passcode to get into his neighborhood. (laughs) And no, I will not leak it. (laughs) But... um, So that is help, even though we aren't boots on the ground there. We do have some sort of boots on the ground over there, and they helped us out a lot. Um, But the first day, we just kind of hung out with his family, and our toddler got to interact with family that she doesn't really see very often. Took a nap, of course, um, and then she wanted to get in the pool. And they warned us that the pool was going to be freezing, and I said, well, She'll figure that out because she's going to scream if I don't let her in that pool. So we let her uh, dip her feet in, and she did not care. She got into the pool, didn't even seem phased, was going up and down the steps, wanted to act like she was swimming around, and did not want to get out. (laughs) Screamed, cried when we got her out, had to change her diaper. Oh, that's another thing to pack, swim diapers. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's really easy, especially if you live, like, up north where there's not a whole lot of swimming going on unless it's, like, August. The middle of summer. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that was cool. Um, And then we kind of ate, hung out. We had to sleep a little bit to kind of recoup from the 5 a.m. flight. Um, And then living, like, two hours from the airport, we had to drive down there the night before um, and stay with a friend. So that was tough. Uh, so the first day was pretty, pretty relaxed. Not a whole lot going on the first day. Second day, you guys went, what day was second day? We, we got down there on a f- Saturday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the next day I went to golf with my cousin and they went to, was it Clearwater? The second day though. <laughs> yeah. We went to the beach after church and then he went golfing with his cousin. Um, it was a pretty chill day. Um, it wasn't too sunny, honestly. I mean, I think it was only like 80, which I know to Midwesterners, that sounds very hot, but in Florida, like the sun was behind the clouds and it was kind of windy. It really didn't feel like 80 and we obviously put sunscreen on her, but she was fine. Didn't get burnt. She had a blast. She loved collecting seashells with my dad. And he was like, you have to take those home. Otherwise, I'm going to be hurt because those are her first seashells that she's ever picked out by herself. Um, She wasn't a fan of the ocean at first. But after my dad held her and then my sister, who is her favorite person in the world, helped her jump over waves. Uh, She loved it. And she's a busybody, so she wanted to go for a walk. Um, and she just wanted to go in and out of the ocean, in and out, in and out. <laughs> and then finally we had to go, and of course she didn't want us to carry her, so it took 15 minutes to get to the car. That was three minutes away because she wanted to walk the whole way herself and got distracted by 10 different things, said hi to 20 different people. <laughs> She's very outgoing. It's a blessing and a curse. Golfing with your cousin. It's pretty basic. Um, really packed. I mean, it was like 4.30 or something, and we had carts waiting, two two carts waiting behind us. We were waiting behind two carts, so it was kind of just rush, hit, 
kind of get up there, play, rush, hit. Neither of us are super – we weren't super great that day. So, um, you know, it was just it was just good to get out and play. I haven't played in a long time. Um, my chipping was pretty solid. Driving was terrible. Um, started to kind of find some contact with it about hole seven, uh, a little bit too late to really be able to enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty solid outing. That's crazy. You had to wait for a hole, you know, cause in my hometown growing up, you'd probably be one of three at the golf course. <laughs> you'd get yeah. to go to any hole and they'd be open. Yeah. I mean, the population difference is insane over there, like small town to big area like that. It's pretty wild. I mean, I didn't grow up in the small, like, rural area like you did, but... You're used to stuff like that? Like, you're talking about, like, the big populated stuff? Like, waiting for anything, waiting on a golf course. Oh, yeah. Waiting at a restaurant. Yeah, I mean... Not walking in and being able to just sit. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely a huge change and very nice, especially going to get your license and stuff like that. That would be like two hours at least. And now it's like I can get in and out of there like 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Day three, um, I know we went back to the beach, did some more swimming. Uh, Sailor ended up getting sunburnt on her left side, which was closest to the sun. But we applied sunscreen multiple times. So I guess there was just a stretch where we didn't apply it soon enough. So... The side that was facing the sun got burnt, but we ended up applying it to where her whole body didn't get burnt. Um, But we were actually fortunate enough. We were going to get aloe, and my mom was like, wait, I think there's an aloe plant outside. And she went, and for those of you who don't know um, what aloe plants are, you literally can just break off the leaf and peel off the skin or like cut the skin and open it up and there's just straight aloe in there and it's awesome because the aloe at the store has alcohol in it so that'll dry up fast and you'll have to use more and that's how they get you to go to the store and buy more bottles of aloe and get your money but uh based off the plant it's literally just straight aloe so we literally were taking the aloe plant leaf and rubbing it on her like crazy Um, and ourselves, uh, I fell asleep on my stomach and got burnt on my back really bad. And now I have a super good tan on my back with a swimsuit line and my front is completely white. I never really struggled too much with sunburn, but being on, um, Accutane now, it's definitely drying out my skin and making me a little bit more sensitive to stuff. So I definitely got burned up worse than I probably ever have, to be honest. Um, and it wasn't like terrible. But just, I noticed it, and normally I just tan and then move on, maybe a little bit of a sunburn, but I was, I like the peeling and the, it was pretty bad on my feet for sure. Even in the spring, Oh yeah, because no we went literally uh, like the middle of March, yeah. so you Floridians don't know how lucky you are that you can tan almost any time of, time of year, and we could only tan for like two months maybe, and you'd have to be out there for hours. Because the UV maybe only gets up to a six when the sun's out sometimes. But yeah, that was a good day. Um, We threw the football around a little bit. That was that that same day, right? Yep. Yeah, so we threw around this little football and... um, It was a Nerf football with a tail on the back. Yeah, yeah, a little tail on the back. We threw that around a little bit, um, so that was fun. Um, Got to kind of get out in the water, kind of roam around a little bit, a little bit warmer than the pool for sure. Um, and then, you know, coming back, we had some, some nice cold cuts, some good salami sandwiches. You're, you're a salami person, right? hundred percent. What's, I mean, what's, what's the second? Chicken breast. That's pretty solid. Definitely can't go wrong with chicken breast. Then turkey. But salami is like way above chicken. Is like heaven. Hard salami. I gotcha. Mm. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, so we had some salami sandwiches. I accidentally ate yours. Yeah, he did. And I was pretty upset because he's not a picky eater. So he would eat any of them. And I'm a very picky eater. So I had to wipe off the what? Mayonnaise that was on Cheese it? Cheese and mayonnaise. 
Disgusting. So good. No. So good. I was kind of upset that mine didn't have those things on there. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I was not aware that they were all made differently. I thought it was just all of them were playing. You added your own stuff to them. But I was wrong. And it's on me. I'm sorry. He actually ate my sister's because I like cheese and my sister's weird and only likes hard salami and bread. And that probably low-key crushed her soul that her sandwich got eaten because I know she wouldn't have touched any of the other sandwiches. Yeah. I mean, she looked at me and said that it's fine. Of course. On the yeah. outside because she's a people pleaser. Yeah. But, uh, on the inside, she was screaming. She's probably ripping my head off on the inside. Next time, let's just think about that. Yep. And maybe be like, hmm, this is really weird that someone just only put two pieces of hard salami on some bread and considered it a sandwich. Well, I figured it was make your own, you know. So the next day, we visited the florists. Um, We got some really good lunch afterwards. Oh, yeah. What is that place? Let's give them a shout out. Um... I don't know, but I'll look it up and I'll probably put it on the screen. Shout out to, um, I don't know. It's a, it was a diner. It was like something's diner. Yeah. It was just like a little place, really good food. Right um, next to the florist. Yeah, we were like the very last customers in there, so um, sorry. We probably came in like 10 minutes before they cl- closed, but they didn't no. have hours or nothing. It was like 30. 30 minutes before they closed? Yeah, we got so. our food 10 minutes before they closed. I gotcha. But anyways, really good. I got a gyro, euro, however you say it. What did you get? I don't remember. Oh, you got a um, you got a salad, didn't you? A Philly cheesesteak. No, you got yeah, you got you got a Philly cheesesteak with absolutely nothing on it. I like, did. I got the cheese and the steak. Philly cheesesteak. There you go. No uh, no toppings, no spice, nothing nice. Well, I guess meat and, che- meat and cheese you can't go wrong with. That's pretty nice. It tasted delicious. Shout out to the waitress. I gave her options because I didn't know which one I would like. And I'm picky with my Philly cheesesteaks because some restaurants just scam you and put on a little hot dog bun and charge you 15 bucks for it when it probably costs like four. Uh, (laughs) But she said it was actually really good and she was eating one at the time. So I was like, all right, put it down. I want that one. And I bit into it and I was like, "Mm." great choice. She definitely has a trusted opinion. Great choice. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and then we went to, well, what is that restaurant called? We went, went to, to the pool. Went first. to the pool. And we hung out there, um, swam around, hung out, ate some random snacks a little bit. And then went to, was it Cra- It wasn't Krabby's, was it? No. What was it called? Oh, it was. It was in that strip. Yeah, there's another like Clearwater hub. Like, a lot of people know about this place down there, and I can't remember the name of it. But it was pretty good, too. Um, so we had a good day of good day of eating that day. We didn't really eat out too much other than that day. We, 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 had, a, we had another time with my family. Right. And we went on a little walk. That was a good place, too. That was a chain. Yeah. We're sorry. No, you can't remember any of these names. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, where we're from, we don't have uh, restaurants. We only have fast food. We're limited on our restaurants, so that's why we don't know any of the restaurants' names. Yeah, maybe we should have probably thought about it before we started this podcast, but that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll throw up the names if, if I can find them. If not, I mean, pretty much every place that we've gone in Clearwater is really good. Yeah. So, Or even down there in that general area, as long as you don't go to like somewhere that is like obviously not good. It's usually good. And we're talking about Clearwater Beach, FY. Clearwater Beach, Florida. The strip on the beach. On the strip. <laughs> on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, and then last day I went to my aunt's house uh, to wait for a flight. Do we do anything before that or no? Literally, we just sat there. We ate lasagna, sat there. Really good lasagna, though. Thanks, Maga. Maga's my grandma, by the way. So thank you for that lasagna. Homemade. Very good. Um, and then we were kind of hanging out, and my uncle brought out the Meta 3, the Meta Quest 3, the VR headset. Well, we played a Marvel game because I asked if they had any board games because I was bored and no one was interacting really. So then we started playing the Marvel game, 
and it ended up just being me and his uncle because everyone else are quitters. Mm-hmm. And we ended up playing for them and we're like, well, maybe since we're the only two sticking it out, one of us will win. And his aunt ended up winning. So I was like, hey, you won, by the way. They did not care. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of those situations I'm not really competitive whenever I'm not uh, or something like that takes too long to where it's like, okay, this should have been over a while ago. But so after that, we did the the MetaQuest 3, the VR headset with the, uh, it was like a boxing game. Yeah. And we have a video of Jade almost <laughs> pretty much punching, punching the wall. Do, make it, make him uncle do a little bit of drywall work. It would have been the corner too. Like I probably would have trim. broken a finger. Or my yeah, it would have been bad. So he he was a no, trooper. not the trim, the corner of the <clears throat> the door frame or the frame of the room. Nope. The corner of the wall. Yep, I said the corner. The corner of the wall, and uh, but you know, my uncle was a trooper. He's in there, kind of guarding, protecting her while <laughs> danger endangering himself. <laughs> Because she almost she almost slugged him slugged him one good, um, so that was really fun. And then I played a little bit, and uh, I ended up throwing the controller because I didn't have it wrapped for my wrist, and I got a little bit too into it. I threw a little one two, and on the two when the two came through that hook, the controller went flying, didn't break, just the battery popped out. But after that, I tied the tied the uh, wrist wrist guys up, and we were slugging, so that was fun. Um, pretty good, pretty would have burned calories to be honest with you. Did you play the Wii when you were younger? Yeah. Did you put the strap on or no? I don't think I did when I was playing like a chill game. When I was playing like something that you got into a little bit, then yeah, like uh, tennis. Were you one of those kids that would just chuck the Wii remote into the TV because you didn't have it wrapped around your wrist? No, 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 no. 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 I never lost. I never chucked the remote into a TV. Not on purpose, on accident. No, 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 I know. I'm just saying in general, I've not done it into a TV. I might have done it... And do other things though. Oh. Maybe the wall. But I've never done it towards the, the TV. So I was so O C D about it. I had to put it around my wrist every single time and make it like as tight as possible to my wrist. Oh. So I that you. it would not move. Yeah. You probably so you had like red marks on your <laughs> arm, like you put a hairband on there. Not that excessive, but sometimes I would have red marks from the clip that you would snap on there. Gotcha. Depending on my wrist having to move. Like when we were playing Wii Sports and I was playing baseball. And I was just hitting homer after homer. Oh, yeah, I'd I gotcha. have like a red spot on my wrist. I gotcha. Softball all-star. Baseball all-star. Yeah, it was baseball. No, I'm saying in general you played softball though. Yeah, but I wasn't an all-star. Uh, I wish. I thought you were very good at baseball, softball. <laughs> My dad almost put me in baseball, though, because it wasn't very competitive when I was younger, and all the girls who were going to be serious about softball just did traveling ball because we didn't have school ball until high school. We just had a little rec league every year. So he was just kind of fed up with not having competition, almost put me in baseball, but he never did. Mm. He didn't want me getting hurt. We could go into a entire like season of episodes about Jade's sports stories. Yeah. For sure. So we will do that. But for this one, I mean, pretty much spring break. We just covered spring break, really. Um, a little bit of traveling with the, he, with the little one. Wait, we forgot to talk about how our flight got delayed. Oh, yeah. Um, so After all the, we did the VR headset. Yeah. I was, uh, was it before? Well, it was about the same time. About the same time we started doing the VR headset, our flight was supposed to leave at about 7.20 at night, um, which is another little travel tip. Like if you're flying in somewhere, fly out early. If you're flying out of somewhere, fly out late because then you, you kind of get like an extra two days. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a flight at like noon or one, then you you the whole day is going to be you just traveling. But if you have like a five a.m. flight, you get there at like eight or nine, and then you have the whole day. And then if you have a seven, you know, six o'clock maybe pushing a little bit, but seven and later, then you can get out and still you know depending on if you're a night owl or not, like to where you can function later at night to drive back and everything. Um, definitely worth it, but. Our flight was scheduled for 7.20, I think. And first time it got delayed, it was like 8.15. Not too bad. Pretty annoying. Not too bad. And then I got a thing that it was moved back to like 7.30. And then I got a text like five minutes later that it was moved to like 10.30 at night. And then an hour later, um, 
it said, okay, 8.15 again. So it kept moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think it ended up leaving at... 10.30. Yeah, so 10.30. So like the second, the the pretty much the latest time that it gave us was whenever we left. Almost. The latest time, I remember one time, it was after midnight. Yeah, so that would have been... Oh, that would have been awful, awful. But <laughs> yeah. it was it was pretty rough, honestly. Um, so we uh we got we were at my aunt's house for a lot longer than we thought we were gonna be. So um we kind of just made some stuff to do and talked a little bit and she Jade read her book, which we we'll do a review of the book on an episode too, because <laughs> she really likes that book. I'm currently reading the Colleen Hoover books. I was late to the trend, wasn't going to jump on it just because it's a trend. Um, and I held off for a while, but then the trend lasted for months. And I was like, okay, clearly her, her books are good because if it just would have been one book, everyone would have read it and the hype would have been over. But uh, all her books were getting hyped up. So I just kind of made it a low-key New Year's resolution to read all of her books this year. So... I've been digging deep into them, and they're pretty good. But the flight being at 1030, so it was two hours, and we were supposed to land at 1230, but we're an hour behind. So it actually would have only been 1130 when we landed, but it messed our toddler's sleep schedule up so bad. She, instead of waking up at 7 or 730 in the mornings now, she wakes up at 6 a.m., and I do not want to get up because I do not go to bed till like midnight. Um, and I'm just not ready to deal with a toddler off of six hours of sleep because I work 12 hour shifts and I do not have enough energy. But we finally got her back in the routine. She just stayed up a little later last night um, and she slept in till about 6:40, seven o'clock this morning. so, That was pretty good. So that is a disadvantage of flying with a toddler is that their sleep schedule will probably get messed up. We even tried to keep her on the same sleep schedule. Like when we were down there, we'd put her to bed at 7. But it was like her body just knew. Yeah, I mean, part of that's a delay too. So the delay definitely didn't help. It wouldn't have thrown her off as bad if we we landed where we were supposed to land. That's true. We literally had to walk around the airport with her because she'd scream if we'd try to sit down and then she'd run off. Good thing there was aquarium in the, um, did we fly through Tampa? Yeah. So the Tampa airport, normally we fly to the Clearwater airport, which is amazing. That's a little hack that you guys should do. Saves you money and time if you're going to fly. But we flew out of the Tampa airport and there's an aquarium in there. So those fish kept her entertained, but Having her in the airport with the delayed flight was definitely rough. Yeah. Um, but, you know, all in all, she's a great kid. She did good. Um, definitely could have been a lot worse. We landed at about 12 a.m., right? Something like that. Well, it would have been 1230 in Florida time, but it got pushed back an hour mm-hmm. because we're an hour behind, so it would have been 1130. Yeah, so we landed pretty late. Uh hauled it over to the car, tried to get out of the parking uh, space we were in, and uh, the card wasn't working. So we paid with a credit card to get in. We were going to pay with a credit card to get out, scanned it twice, um, pulled back, went to the other lane, scanned it twice, nothing. I tried to call them, didn't hear anything. It was weird. Called again on my actual cell phone and on the machine, and uh, then the person answered and said that they were sending somebody out. So the guy gets there, and... He walks up to the machine. He asks us how long we've been there. Um, And then he, like, goes to reset the the machine, and he just lets us get out for without paying. Yeah, for free. He was was like, it's on me. Go ahead. Yeah, so that was a big blessing. I thought he was joking at first because it would have been, like, $130. I think it was $115. $115. Um, So that was super nice. Um, especially at a time like that when you're like already kind of upset about the flight getting delayed and having to drive another like hour and a half back home and we're both tired and we just want to go to bed. Um, we both had to work the next day. So that was really nice. Um, not even the next day that day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
so that was really nice. Um, but yeah, all in all, pretty solid trip. Got a lot done. Um, didn't have to take like too much time off and stuff from work. So that's always a plus. Um, and then we're going back in August, which will be very fun. Very fun. If we do a podcast on that, whew, stay tuned. Yeah, you're in for, in for a little treat. Batch trip and wedding. Yes, ma'am. All right, we got to close. Um, so uh, I think the most important thing to take away is that you can do it. If you're traveling with a toddler, you can do it. Um, if you're like a single parent or something like that, traveling with a toddler, uh, we'll, we'll pray for you. <laughs> I was like, what are you going to say about that? Cause that'd because be that, rough. That'd, that'd be rough. Um, but you know, if you got, if you got a, you got a kid and you're thinking about it or you're worried about it, uh, just shoot for it. If you haven't done it before, if you have done it before, um, you know, it's, it's kind of pretty much life at this point. You know, if you're a young couple with a new kid, it's, uh, it's just something you're going to have to kind of get over the hemp on. Right. I think we should close how we opened. Well, like, like, see you later, guys. And girls. <laughs>